Shelly Wade. All right, what's the buzz when we make sure you're in the loop on all the celebrities? And here to catch you up on the hot Hollywood headlines you might have missed over the holiday weekend is Kiss FM radio host Shelly Wade. Shelly Wade. You guys look gorgeous. Are we? We got a pretty party going on. Shelly Wade is one of the country's top radio air personalities. She's based in San Diego. Shelly, thanks for joining me. That's right, it's time to get down here to my sister. Give it up for the king from the wedding ringer. I'm saying to Kevin on the uh, red carpet that uh, the Martin Luther King holiday weekend has turned out to be your weekend, much like uh, Will Smith's weekend was the July 4th weekend. This is Kevin's weekend. Uh, it's shaving up. <laughs> you know, I hope so. Here at the Billboard Women in Music Awards. Here. <laughs> you always give me a kiss. <laughs> Hey, Shelly. Hey, Matthew. How are you? Uh, I'm good. We got some people in the audience already for you, and it's going to continue to fill up. I have a question before we start the interview. Um, at some point, would you like to take uh, questions from the audience, or yes or no? Uh, we'll take one or two. Okay. So we'll take a couple of questions, uh, Bigani. It awesome. is time to what get started. What is our topic today? <clears throat> you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn, can we close the door so the echo... You in San Diego? I am. Are you in Houston? Yes, yes, yes. Me and Gina, we are here. Well, when you get back to SoCal, we have to get together. Yeah. Well, Socially definitely. distanced, of course. Well, hopefully you will have gotten your vaccine by then. <clears throat> well, Matthew, I'm not of age yet. <laughs> well, but it'll be three, <laughs> three or four months. Hopefully it will happen to you. Okay. You know, I, this president is, is in, in three, four months, he plans on having the whole country vaccinated. Okay. You ready to do this? I'm ready. Let's do this. All right, Bigani. Yes. So um, thank you to Miss Shelley Wade and also Mr. Matthew Knowles. Um, Black Top University is pleased to host your session of discussion. We're very excited about it. So Shelley Wade is an accomplished media personality who's a trailblazer in radio. She started her radio career at 97.9 The Box, Houston, the first hip hop station in the South. She was also the first African-American to ever have a full-time radio show on the world famous Z100 New York. Woo, woo, that's a big accomplishment. As a television personality, Shelly has been an entertainment and pop culture correspondent on the Today Show, The Talk, the Steve Harvey Show, CNN, and more. As a voiceover artist, Shelly voiced a NASA documentary that played at the United Nations. She's voiced national TV and radio commercials for Beyonce, Kesha, Missy Elliott, Lucinda Williams, and more. Currently, she's the official voice of the Donnie Simpson Weekend Show. Today, we have the author, the professor, lecturer, motivational speaker, music executive, artist manager, entrepreneur, and cancer survivor. Matthew Knowles joins Shelly Wade for an informative and entertaining conversation hosted by Blacktop University. Thank you. And without any further delay, let's um, get into the All the Rage with Shelly Wade conversation with the great doctor. Matthew Knowles. Matthew, I, I so appreciate you joining me in to have this chat. Well, Shelly, you know, I, most people don't know, uh, you were in Houston at 97.9 The Box. Uh, Kashan, 
uh, was one other person. All three of you have gone on to do extremely well in radio. Very proud of what you've accomplished. <laughs> and you. we had the opportunity to work together at Z100 uh, in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, and I feel and think of you as a mentee. I hope uh, uh, so when you when I read about you and I see the things, I'm very proud because, uh, you know, we spent a lot of time just having conversation about life and about business and uh, how to strategize success. I, I appreciate that. And, you know, I think about all of the things, you know, I was looking for. Um, a photo of just you and I to post on my social media because, you know, we have spent so much time together, but I could not find one um, of just you and I. I found one of me, you, Tina, and uh, Beyonce and Kelly and Michelle at um, the, you guys, I don't know if you remember, but you had a, a private dinner after the Billboard Awards in Vegas one year and you invited me. And so I posted that onto my IG, guys, if you want to take a look, that is, that link is in my um, bio. But um, yeah, I mean, I just had so so many great memories um, with you guys, that one. I remember um, when I first moved to New York in 2001 after the MTV Awards, you remember you put on that, um, the, um, the surprise birthday party for Beyonce and you invited me? Yes, of course we invited you. Those uh, were fun times. That was a fun party. Uh, and I think that was just when Beyonce and Jay-Z had started dating on the down low. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, you know, so, the, the, the news wasn't public yet, but I saw, I saw sparks between them at that party. What were you about so, Shelly, were you at uh, 97.9 The Box? Because, you know, most people don't know the, the song Survivor. Uh, mm -hmm. was really because, you know, Mad Hatter and all those guys on the morning show would, would make fun of Destiny's Child when we were changing members. Were you there uh -oh. then? You weren't I there was, then. I right? was there. Of course I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just put Hatter on blast? <laughs> I just put you on blast, Mad Hatter. <laughs> no, Mad Hatter's a friend. All those guys. Yeah. All of you. I mean. You know, but it was an inspiration for Beyonce and myself to write Survivor. So I'm, I'm I thankful. Didn't, I didn't realize that the station, you know, because for, for everyone in the audience, just to give you a little background, um, as Matthew said, and as Bigani said, I used to work at 97.9 The Box. It was the first hip hop station in the South. And, it, you know, being in Houston, it was the home station for, you know, Matthew and the girls from uh, Destiny's Child. And, and it's so interesting because, you know, I was the entertainment reporter on the station and so you and I would have conversations all the time because I you know I had to talk about it you know although I knew the girls we had to talk about everything that was going on you know all the all the controversy you know the successes and you know with uh, I don't know Latoya and Latavia leaving the group and and Farrah leaving the group and I just want to say kudos to you because you were never one Matthew to say hey we're not going to talk about that no comment um, and uh, don't ask this question when you when we interview you always confront those uh, questions head on and gave us answers and I remember you even inviting me into the music well world offices um, and you know just giving me an interview it was off record but you wanted me to know as the person that's you know talking to the people of Houston about what's going on with the group you wanted me to know your side of the story and so I always uh, appreciate that about you that you confronted things you know head on well I I, I, I... You know, I just, I've always been that way. Uh, you know, I stand behind what I say and things that I, I say, I research and um, they don't come from a place of emotion. They come mm -hmm. from a, a place of facts. Mm -hmm. And I've always just enjoyed working with you. You're smart. Uh, you have a sixth sense in interviews. You have that voice. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. You. <laughs> so I'm just proud of you, Shelly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I have to get this out of the way since we're talking about you confronting issues head on. I thought that this was going to be a conversation we're going to talk about, you know, because your story is inspirational to me and to a lot of people in this audience. And I thought that that was the only thing I was going to talk to you about. Then I opened up the gossip blogs, Matthew, and you got some controversy going on with fans. So, it, you know, I have to talk to you about that um, because people are going to want to know your, your uh, thoughts on it. Um, the group, uh, Chloe and Hallie, um, you you were doing an interview recently, and the interviewer um, asked you if you thought uh, Chloe reminded you of a young Beyonce, <laughs> and you, you you seem to take offense at the uh, the comparison, <laughs> and the fans are like, "What?" 
And then Hallie um, got on, you know, uh, social media and defended her sister. I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts on that, um, on, on the aftermath of that. Yeah, I, I would have been the same if they had a, uh, compared her to Mary J. Blige or Rihanna. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't, you know, I was coming from, you know, my experience and my tenure that I've been in the music and in industry and what I've accomplished. I'm very proud of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so when someone makes a comment like that, they're also commenting on me as a manager and a music executive. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm about knowledge. And, and when you speak on things, fans, fans don't speak with knowledge. Fans speak with emotions. Mm -hmm. Music people, we speak with knowledge. And so when you compare people, you have to understand in our industry, once you have an album that comes out, you are then considered a professional. So I had, you said, you know, some young lady in Houston, Texas at high school and compare that. That's one thing. But when you compare a professional with another professional, then it just becomes facts. Wouldn't you agree? It, mm -hmm. It's about information. So let me give you some facts. Okay. Th this duo, first album, first week, sold 2,600 records. You're De talking about Chloe and Halle. Correct. Mm -hmm. Destiny Shaw, for example, sold 200,000. Mm-hmm. Beyonce has 24 Grammys and nine nominations, which would, if she win, I think three, she would have the most Grammys in the history of, of, the, of Grammys. Right now, yeah. it's more Grammys than any female. Okay. Beyonce has been ASCAP Songwriter of the Year. Now, this group has two albums out, so you have to compare you know, one person is a songwriter of the year. The other person, one person has 24 Grammys. I mean, you, I looked at, when I compare and made my comment, it was just, and I'm, I don't backpedal, it's based on facts. There's nowhere factually you can compare the two people. It would, it's idiotic. It would be the same to, if, again, if you had said, Rihanna, it would be idiotic. Okay. Okay. Okay, well, I accept your answer on that. I, you know, for some reason, I thought you were going to be like, well, I didn't really mean it that way. <laughs> Matthew's like, well, well I not backtracking. Got, I think people <laughs> got hung up on the word idiot. Uh-huh. And the idiot wasn't, you know, the media even said I can call the young lady an idiot. I, I mean, I, I don't know much about this group, I, I have to tell you. Mm -hmm. uh, but if, if anything, I was calling the person that was interviewing me an idiot. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> shots fired. Shots. No, just, just joking. <laughs> you guys, um, you are checking out the All the Rage with Shelly Wade conversation with the great Dr. Matthew Knowles. Um, thanks to Blacktop University for having us. Be sure to hit that greenhouse at the top uh, to uh, join the group. Follow me. Follow Matthew. Um, we've got a lot of lot more great conversations on the way. Uh, Matthew, before we get into the bulk of the interview, I want to do a wellness check on you. First of all, you know, I know you're in Houston. And, you know, my family's in Houston. Um, how did you fare during the winter storm and the aftermath? Was your home affected? Um, are you guys okay? Uh, thank you for asking. You know, a lot of our friends and, and family were not. We were fortunate and grateful uh, that we were fine. Uh, uh, but a lot of our friends and families and a lot of folks in the community of Houston were not. And, mm -hmm. uh, and we helped in every way that we could. Okay. Uh, uh, but I, the city is coming back uh, uh, slowly, but I think, you know, in, in the next month, the, the city will be pretty much back to order. But it was a lesson, I think, uh, in terms of energy and resources and having generators as backups. Uh, I think it was, uh, and, 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 you know, I always say through failure and mistakes, that's an opportunity to grow, mm -hmm. not a reason to quit. And I think through all of this, we've learned to do some things differently. 
Okay. And of course, you revealed to the world that you were diagnosed with breast cancer, I think a couple of years back. Um, not only did you fight it, but you, um, you won the battle, you're a survivor. And I thought, you know, I was listening to you have a new, the, one of the main reasons I wanted to interview you is because you have um, a new podcast called Impact. And I've listened, I'm caught up on all the episodes, Matthew, I've listened to all of them, I'm really enjoying it. Um, and I heard you say on the podcast that you used to sell machines that detected breast cancer. How ironic is it that you were, I, I know you probably could have never imagined that you would have been uh, at some point in your life um, diagnosed with it. Well, a couple of things, uh, you know, we, we believe in messaging. So I don't say for men, breast cancer. I just think that's just not the right messaging, the right way of saying it. I, I prefer using male chest cancer. Okay. Uh, something, and, and I think there's a, a, a lot of men that are way more comfortable with that and hopefully by changing the messaging more men will go get exams uh and save lives at the end of the day uh mm -hmm. save lives but you know with with any form of cancer and when we look at you know black men especially we lead in every when you look at cancer and heart disease we lead in the mortality death rate in every area other than suicide and breast cancer. Uh, and, and so health and wellness for black men because we, we're, we don't believe in going to the doctor and doing our exams on an annual basis uh, or even knowing uh, what exams. So I, 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 wanted to, I wanted to be open about my cancer and hoping that I could help others. Uh, and I, I, I've had the opportunity and the privilege to talk about it like we are today. And yes, at Xerox Medical Systems, uh, I sold zero radiography, which in the 80s was the leading modality for breast cancer. But I did know from that that 1% uh, uh, of men uh, could get male chest cancer. It actually saved my life, Shelley, and that I knew that from selling the equipment, because when you sell to doctors, you have to really know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so when I had this discharge, I knew after the first day, I, 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 I didn't think of any, I didn't think anything. The second day, I thought, uh, maybe my wife got some new T-shirts. The third day, when it was bloody, I said, no, this is probably male chest cancer. I need to go to the doctor. I need to get a mammogram. Uh, and, and it's all about also genetics. And that same uh, law that applies to women, if you have family history, applies to men as well. And we're now understanding that genetics uh, is really the key in, to get genetic testing. And there's many ways today to get genetic testing. It's an easy, simple saliva test. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just sharing knowledge uh, of my experience and hope that it helps some others. Okay. One more thing in wellness check. Um, the coronavirus, of course, uh, the pandemic has um, upended all of our lives. Um, things seem to be getting, you see, we seem to be turning a corner somewhat. Um, how do you feel about the vaccine? Have you gotten it yet? Yes. Yes. Me, my wife and I both. Uh, grateful to uh, have gotten both dosage. Um, I get really saddened when I hear that there's a number of people. I, I was just watching uh, CNN last night, and uh, they're projecting 20 to 25 percent of the U.S. population um, won't get the vaccine or right now have decided not to get it, which becomes problematic because we need to have uh, more numbers of the population if we're going to really get a, get rid of this thing uh, and, and get back to where we were. Uh, so, yes, I've gotten the vaccine, uh, and now I'm very happy with today's leadership uh, that they've opened up the uh, opportunity for others to get the vaccine. And I hope people that are, are listening right now really, really think. I mean, it, 
I understand going back to history and going back to years in the past and how we were used as guinea pigs for a lot of different type of experiments. But today is different because it would mean a whole lot of black people would have to be in on this conspiracy. Uh, from the highest level of doctors, uh, from the highest level of the president's office, uh, a whole lot of people would have to be in on that. And I think if you are against getting a vaccine, uh, then you should be uh, concerned about every meal you eat. Uh, when you drink water, you should be concerned about any prescription drug you take all the way down to vitamins and aspirins. You should be concerned that your cell phone might be part of a conspiracy and tracking you. Uh, so, I mean, it's, anybody that has that cons conspiracy theory, you know, they should really be a conspiracy theorist. But for me, and you and I talked about this, Shelley, uh, one of the things that a lot of people, and I certainly went through, and uh, you might want to share, but the mental, the mental part of this coronavirus. You know, I I called on the, my my therapist, a black man in Dallas, who I hadn't talked to in years, uh, but I was having anxiety attacks, and I was so frightened I was going to die uh, from coronavirus that I had, you know boarded myself up inside of the house. Didn't want my wife to go out. Didn't want any body. I didn't want packages. I didn't want anything coming in. Uh, and it was all about fear. And it was all about my cancer. Uh, yeah, and not the underlying um, condition. Uh, was this early on during the pandemic or how, how long did that fear last for you? Uh, well, it was about three months of weekly therapy sessions with my therapist. Um, that helped me overcome that. And, and a lot of, uh, and I've heard a lot of people, uh, even the loneliness that was, a, is, and, and still is associated with this, uh, coronavirus. Yeah. You and I were talking about that. I mean, listen, I'm single. I live alone. And normally that's really fun because I don't have to answer to anyone. And I have, I get to get up and go anytime I want. But during the pandemic, I have felt very isolated. And I don't think you and I were talking about, we, we may discuss this on your podcast, um, Matthew Knowles Impact, but um, I have felt very isolated. And I don't think that's talked about enough, um, you know, as a you know, a result, one of the, you know, one of the things that has come out of the pandemic for single people. Well, I think you're right. It certainly has not been talked enough. And I think, you know, in, in the, the psychology community, uh, you know, I always hear that after a year, the brain uh, really changes. If you condition the brain to systematically do the same thing over 12 months, uh, and there's a lot of concern, even with people going back to an office environment. Um, how, what is that going to be like, uh, interfacing with people again? We haven't really interfaced uh, from a personal standpoint in almost a year. So it's going to be a transition. You know, I, I, I believe that uh, the world is tra changing with technology that a lot of people will stay at home and work from home. Uh, we are seeing that people are more productive working at home. What's the point of getting dressed, driving for 45 minutes to an hour, parking your car, going to the office when that's two, three hours of productivity wasted that you could have just done at home? That's, hey, listen, that's the, the businessman CEO side of you talking. <laughs> um, speaking of, let's take this back to the entertainment of it. Um, you know, had you still been managing Destiny's Child while this pandemic uh, was going on, how would you have handled that? Because so many people in entertainment, um, especially the people touring and such, their uh, livelihoods have been taken away, taken away from them. How would you, as um, an artist management uh, manager, excuse me, and CEO, how would you have managed Destiny's Child career through this? Well, good question, Shelley. You know, I am uh, this is my fifteenth year in a classroom. So literally last night, two and a half hours uh, with my class from University of Houston, 
the music music industry in a digital age. So, you know, I, I teach this stuff. I have to know this stuff. And that's why I come from a place of facts. The facts are is that uh, from a streaming perspective of recorded music, uh, we still have some few CD sales and vinyl sales and a few downloads. Our industry increased 9.2%. Again, it increased 9.2% over the previous year. And this would be the fifth consecutive year that our industry has grown. Now, from a touring perspective, you're absolutely correct. It's been terrible. It has been terrible. But my point is, is that it wasn't the, the end all and doom and gloom for okay. all artists because there was an increase in the recording side of fans and, and buying music. And, and, and so that's a good thing. You know, I, I think if I would have had Destiny Child or Beyonce or Solange or Leandria or Trinity 5-7 or Earth 1 and Fire, any other artists I've been fortunate enough to have, I would have been looking at uh, some digital p ways of performances uh, and made it intimate and safe on the stage. I, I would have did something with digital uh, using technology to still keep it going. I, you know, I'm a public speaker. And uh, I had to transition from being on the stage to doing Zoom. Uh, yeah. We all had to transition, uh, many of us rather, from the live event part of it. So, okay, there are a lot of people in the audience, Matthew, who are interested in, um, you know, being a, um, you know, big mogul in the entertainment industry like you are. And um, you often mention that you grew up in Alabama and you didn't even have uh, running toilets in the house. So uh, can you share with everyone for some inspiration and motivation? Um, how did you go from that? How did you go from the outhouse to the boardroom? And what did it take for you to become a CEO? And how hard was it to make the transition from being in the corporate world to being a trailblazer in the music world? I know that's like a three-pronged question. But how well, did you I was, come? I was really stuck on... That would make a great book title. From, from the, the outhouse out, to the boardroom? <laughs> from the outhouse to the boardroom. <laughs> you, can I, I, you can take it. I, you I, don't I have like, to give it. Shelly, I actually like that. Book. You can take that title. Just give me board. credit. Listen, just give me credit when you write the book. <laughs> okay. I, I, you know, I, I, I like that title. But, but no, I have wonderful, wonderful, wonderful great parents um, who instilled in me that I could do whatever I dreamed uh, as long as I got knowledge. So I'm fortunate to, although we were poor, I had parents that were role model. model. You know, my family, grandparents, uh, all are entrepreneurial. Not mainly in entrepreneurship and education is the nose side of the family. A lot of folks in education. Um, and, and so I had role models um, you know, I desegregated uh, in my small town, elementary, junior high, high school. So I had an opportunity to experience not just from a black perspective, uh, but also to being in those classrooms to experience a white perspective of life as well, which gave me a better overall perspective of life and how to go about it, and how to be strategic about it. Uh, education was always uh, pounded in, in me uh, that I would go to college. Uh, that was never an afterthought. And so, you know, I still to this day think a lot of who we are really starts from my knowledge. Uh, a lot of things we say and how we uh, critically think and when comments are made uh, and how we critically answer those, do we answer them from emotions or do we answer them from facts? Uh, so, you know, my parents gave me that perspective uh, on life and I'm proud of that. You know, it's interesting that uh, Solange and Beyonce's, both of their parents grew up on dirt road. You know, my, my friend Tina, she grew up on a dirt road in Galveston. But that should be an inspiration, hopefully, to everyone listening. 
that regardless of your current background situation, uh, regardless of that, you can overcome and you can succeed in life. But first, you have to get knowledge. And that doesn't necessarily mean going to college. Um, knowledge is, is, you know, you can find knowledge by going to Google sometimes. You can get knowledge by going to Wikipedia. Uh, YouTube. So, YouTube. So it, it's just getting knowledge and information is so critically important in success because without knowledge, you're not going to uh, have the uh, opportunity to generate income. Uh, it's going to affect your housing. Uh, you know, knowledge really impacts how we live. Yeah, and um, I really am interested in knowing how did you gain the knowledge from leaving Xerox, um, the business world, the corporate world, to becoming the manager of Destiny's Child and becoming the CEO of Music World Entertainment Corporation? Well, if uh, you have the opportunity to read uh, Destiny's Child Untold Story, uh, you realize, yeah, you did. You just released that last last year, right? Yeah, December. Uh, um, you know, you you. I, I share. There was a five year gap from the time I left Xerox to the time I got in the industry, music industry, full time. I worked uh, three years with Philips Medical Systems. After Xerox, the president of Xerox Medical Systems became the president, brought his number. I was the number one sales rep for the medical division. So, of course, of the, you were <laughs> one of the first blacks to sell MRI and CT scanners. Yeah. Then, headhunters is you know, when you're successful in that field, headhunters are always uh, calling to get you other positions. And so, I worked with Johnson and Johnson for a couple of years as a neurosurgical specialist. So. The myth is I left Xerox to form Destiny Shaw, which is all incorrect. I've always believed that, Matthew. No, it's, it's totally incorrect. Okay. Um, but it just goes to show how you can say something today in the media and it doesn't have to be factual. No different than 75% of the times, uh, really ins uh, insult. To me, people don't spell my name correct. Um, Matthew I, is with one T, not with two T's. I'm but sure you. I'm, I'm not sure if you notice. I always spell it correctly. Yeah, but I want people to understand why that is because the analytics of it is easier and greater with two T's, and so the media prefer not to be responsible and respectful, uh, but to get the analytics of Matthew with two T's versus. Matthew with one T. See, most people just don't know how entertainment works. So when I make comments, I don't care who I insult. I'm making factual comments. And those of us in the industry understand my comments. Fans wouldn't. Okay. But <laughs> I want you to kind of be a little more specific as to how people can get the knowledge. And I know they can buy the book, but if you can give a couple of tidbits, how you gain the knowledge, um, you know, from coming from the corporate world to, you know, being so successful in the music world. Just a couple of tidbits of what they could do. Yeah, I, I will. And I, you know, today I wasn't coming on here to, to push books because that's not what I do. Uh, but I did just recently re-release uh, with an additional 100 pages uh, the book that I do, my, my, my public speaking, the motivational speaking, which is called The DNA of Achievers, 10 Traits of Highly Successful Professionals. Now, I don't think I can be more clear that if there's a book that you can read that I wrote that talks about the 10 traits, uh, obviously, we're not going to have time today, but it starts really with passion and identifying your passion. And I've, and I've been on before and always this passion is the number one because it's the number one reason of failure is that we're not really living in our passion. We're working at a job. We're doing something that our parents told us we should probably do. We're doing something maybe our husband or wife said we should do, or our best friends. But is it really the thing 
that you and I really want to do in life, it's unfortunate for that because what coexists with that, with passion, is your work ethics. So when you see successful people, uh, you also see people that work extremely hard, 12 hours a day, seven days a week sometimes. But it's not work to them. It's just having fun and they're moving the needle every day. Uh, and and you know, when you talk about those 10 traits, it's leadership. Uh, leadership becomes very, very important. Um, and, and sometimes you have to have t very thick skin uh, when, you, when you talk about leadership. Uh, and then when you look at those traits also, you have to be a visionary. And most people, rather than being a visionary, they'll go and ask people around them what they think about an idea. True visionaries don't care what other people think about their idea. They go to people and tell them what they need from you. They'll, they'll ask, for example, I don't, I didn't ask you, Shelly, what you thought about my podcast, Matthew Knowles Impact. I asked how you could help me with my podcast, Matthew Knowles Impact. That's two different things and two different approaches. Yeah. Leaders think outside of the box. They're not box-in thinkers. They, yeah. All of us have been conditioned, Shelly, when we were young kids. A lot of us, not all of us, that's a, a drama word. But a lot of us and some of us have been conditioned. Ever since we were kids in elementary school growing up, of the things we couldn't do. And we couldn't do them because we were black. We couldn't do them because we were female. We couldn't do them because we were poor. We couldn't do them because we were short or too tall. Uh, all of the reasons why we couldn't do them because we grew up on a dirt road with an outside outhouse. You ain't never gonna be worth a hill of beans. Now I could have bought into that. You know how many times I heard you would never be worth a hill of beans growing up in Gaston, Alabama? And most of us and some of us, we have that still hear those messagings from our childhood. That's why mental illness is real. That's mm -hmm. why when we talk about health and wellness, the mental aspect of it is real. Yeah. Because even with racism in America, it's a conditioning. And so when you look at leaders, they've been conditioned to succeed. They've been conditioned to think outside of the box and to do it differently and to ask, why the hell we do it this way? Now we look back a year later and we say, why the hell weren't we at home doing Zoom anyway? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why did I fly all the way from Houston to New York, get a hotel, and have a one-hour meeting? Why did I do that? That was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we, we, we learn a lot in leaderships and change, modify and adapt behaviors all becomes part of growth, individual growth. Uh, and it's about building a team around you. Uh, and not I, but we. And it's about planning and being strategic in our planning. One year planning, three year planning, five year planning. When I manage my artists, and you know, we were fortunate to build a number one gospel label. I didn't know nothing about the music industry when I got in it. I didn't know anything about diagnostic imaging when I got in it. I didn't know anything about a hair salon, which you know we had the number top hair salon in Houston. Headliners. I, I, I used to go to headliners. I used to get my hair did there. I and didn't I, know anything, <laughs> Shelly, about the dark on clothing industry. And then we develop a clothing line. I'm saying you can transfer knowledge. Yeah. The knowledge you learn in corporate America, you can use in music. The knowledge you learn in music you can use in apparel because it's at the end of the day all about marketing and once you understand truly marketing messaging and how you message then you you get it 
Yeah, and, and I, you know, by the way, we are, um, you are listening to Dr. Matthew Knowles inside the Elder Age with Shelly Wade, live conversation here on Blacktop University. Be sure to hit the green um, house next to a Blacktop University so you can join and follow. Um, and um, follow me, head to our, um, our um, bios and follow me and Matthew. Um, Matthew always has a bunch of exciting stuff going on. But to your point earlier, Matthew, um, I am just now realizing, you know, all these years into my career to stop asking people for their advice on what I'm doing. I mean, I don't mind, you know, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with asking people who have more experience to give you, you know, pointers and, and inspiration and motivation. But you know that, that when you used to ask someone for, uh, I'm not sure if you ever did, but I did, um, you know, what's your opinion on me doing this? You know, you have to be, to your point, sure about what you're doing. You don't have to ask people for permission. That, that, that's so true. And yes, I've done that before early on in life. Uh, but but I tell you, I, I've, I'm around uh, quite a few successful people and they just don't do that. They don't ask what you think of their ideas. They ask how you can impact their ideas and give I input to their ideas. I absolutely love that. Now, you mentioned earlier, you know, you teach courses. Um, you've, you've been quoted as saying, my mission in life is to motivate and educate. You teach courses all over the world. I think currently you're teaching a course at the University of Houston and Prairie View A&M University. Uh, but you've um, taught courses all over the world. What is it um, that makes you know that educating the next generation is your, part of your calling? Well, I have to add, so I don't uh, make make anyone upset here, I also teach at the Art Institute, uh, 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 you know, online, and there's nine physical campuses, and so that's, we actually start up uh, the quarter in two weeks here, I'm teaching entrepreneurship. Um, oh, I so love I, that. I love I, that. I, I just, you know, I, I just love working with young people. Uh, you know, I, I believe that our future are young people. I'm proud of what our youth have done. And uh, Matthew, like, Matthew, sorry to interrupt you. You believe the children of the future? <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I, I do. I do believe in the children of the future. I, I do think, though, that if there was one thing that I would want to see our youth do more of, and that's toughen up. Uh, they've had, you know, I think there has to be tougher skin. You know, you, you, you know, it's all about, you can't talk to me this way or you, you know, you can't look at me this way. Uh, you know, we have to, that's a story I like to, to share. I used to say this to my, my girls. If I go out of town and tell you not to use my car, but you use my car and you get in an accident and there was a drunk man that ran the red light and he ran into my car. Don't call me saying, daddy, a drunk man ran the red light and wrecked your car because I asked you not to drive your car. And I use that example only so people can understand my perspective and young people. If you do something wrong, you might get yelled at. You might be called some things. What today's generation does is deflect it on, well, you can't talk to me like that. And they deflect on the fact that they drove the car when they weren't supposed to. And so we have a world now that deflects more on how you said things to them than what the substance of what was done. Matthew, I really wanted to ask you about um, your podcast. It's brand new. Like I said earlier, you are, um, you know, everybody and their mama has a podcast now, but I suspect that's not the reason you wanted to start your podcast because everybody's doing it. What was your motivation and tell everybody why they should check it out? Well, my motivation, you just said, was to educate and to motivate. Uh, there's four core pillars of Matthew knows who knows him. Racism. Structural racism, uh, all combined as one. Talk about entrepreneurship, health and wellness, and the music business. Not a lot on the music business. 
And the more I'm doing this, the, the less I want to talk about music business. I'm talking more, you know, my first um, uh, episode was with Al Sharpton. Uh, and I have a unique way that I interview. I try to uh, always unveil something that you didn't know about this, the person. So I do a, a tremendous amount of research, have a team of people that help me with the research uh, of understanding that defining moment that we all had in our lives that made us change and go into a di different direct direction. Jimmy Lee Peterson was my second interview. Um, Matthew, I texted you. I don't know if you got the text, but I was like, listen, you were so patient with Jimmy Lee Peterson. I don't know if I could have been as patient with him. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm typically patient until you, your, your facts are incorrect or your perspective is, I feel, incorrect. Uh, then I'm not, I'm very impatient at that point. And, 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 and we'll give you some words to go with it. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm noted for that. But, but Jimmy Lee, here's a black man that grew up in Alabama, the same age as I am, uh, on a dirt road and outside our house as well. And don't believe that racism exists in America and think, you know, a lot of black people are evil that even want to talk about education or finance, uh, wealth. Uh, and he's a Trump supporter. Uh, I think he's the greatest thing since coming. Of, I think he's said the coming of Jesus Christ. Uh, interesting interview. Uh, this week, uh, uh, Stormy um, Simon, uh, she was uh, um, at one point president of Overstop.com, but you know, I'm proud of that. She's a white female. But we talk about the comparison. Here's a woman that didn't go to college, went to college, but never graduated from college, that was on fair welfare twice and has a perspective and view of welfare that it was a privilege that she should have had. Uh, and, and that's why she used it, because it was a privilege she sh should have had, uh, who became president of a $2 billion company. And I just don't believe us. We have callers that call in, and the call in was a black woman would never have that opportunity in America. Uh, you know, I have some upcoming interviews uh, with Scarface, who you know here in Houston, and uh, yeah. Brad, and another uh, young uh, black man who came within hours of dying of COVID. And what those hours were like and, uh, you know, to hear their perspective and to hear Brad's uh, Scarface perspective, his life will never be the same because of COVID. Uh, and understand that they, they both came to near death. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have upcoming also, um, oh gosh, I had a mental blank, uh, with Questlove, uh, Questlove. Questlove. Oh, love Questlove. Plus Love in the New York Times about three years ago, maybe it was four, said that if he had the opportunity to have dinner with 10 people, uh, he named the 10 people and I was one of the 10 people that he named. Oh, wow. Uh, and so uh, those are the type of interviews and uh, uh, in, in, in the type of uh, uh conversations because i like just to have conversations an uh, interview is when in my mind is when i ask you questions and you answer a conversation mm -hmm. is when we both ask each other questions and just talk mm -hmm. uh, so I, I i just like having conversations with these people and we all share perspectives yeah i always like that too the the conversation of it all is one of the favorite favorite uh, my favorite aspects of uh, my work um, so it's Matthew Knowles Impact, available on iHeartRadio, uh, Apple Podcasts, and wherever you get your podcasts, right? Yeah, yeah. And I, I tell you, I'm very uh, humble uh, with the number of subscribers uh, and, and that we out of the gate started out with. Uh, I'm looking forward to an uh, interview this week. I uh, won't give away who it is, but we're going to get into, and we just saw on CNN, uh, what, what Oprah actually, uh, you know, in one of my books, Racism from the Eyes of a Child, I really get into colorism. 
Uh, and so we're going to really do a deep dive into colorism, which is, you know, I want my show to make people thought think. I want it to be uh, something that's thought provoking. Uh, I want people to be uncomfortable because that's the first indication of change is when something makes you uncomfortable or when I say something that makes you uncomfortable, sometimes it's the beginning of the process of change. Okay. And I am all, like I said to you earlier, I'm all caught up on my episodes of uh, uh, Matthew <laughs> Knowles' Impact. So <laughs> I can't, I actually just listened to the, um, I can't remember her, what her, her name, the one you had on um, this week, the new episode. Yeah, Stormy. Um, Stormy. Yeah, Stormy. I listened to that one last night. Uh, I had to run some errands and pick up some dinner. And I listened to that while I was in my vehicle. So it's good listening. Really well, was. thank you. Thank you. You're very uh, welcome. You guys be sure to uh, subscribe to that. But although, and you know, I don't know if you need the help since you said there's so many already. <laughs> already no, we're going to have Shelly Wade on our show for sure. <laughs> Certainly. We've got a lot to talk about, Shelly. A hey, lot um, to talk about. Matthew, um, we're kind of winding down the interview, but I, I was kind of saddened to hear that you're thinking about stepping away from the music industry. Say it ain't so. You know, I, I, Shelly, I, when I was in a corporate America, I said I was going to do it 20 years. And it was almost 20 years to the day that I left corporate America. Uh, I had said I was going to do music 25 years. And I think we probably more like 27. You know, when I look in my, right now, I'm looking at my office and I see, uh, I have a lot of, a lot of photos. And I see Solange performing with B.B. King. Uh, I see Jules and Solange. I see Muhammad Ali uh, with Destiny's Child. I see me, a photo of me at Sony signing the, the LJs to Music World. I made their, did their last two albums here. I see me signing a record deal with Earth, Wind & Fire. Uh, their last album, Maurice has his hands on my shoulder. Uh, I see me and Quincy Jones in a photo. Uh, I see my grandkids, Salon's wedding, and my parents and me and my younger sister. Uh, I see my, my wonderful and beautiful wife. Uh, I've, uh, in the music industry, I've been grateful to have amazing artists uh, in the gospel. And people don't know Brian Courtney Wilson, Trinity 5-7, Vanessa Bell Armstrong, Leandra Johnson, who Grammy winner and went on to get Billboard's number one female artist about six, seven years ago, and all the uh, winners of, of uh, BET Sunday Best for five years. And to go from zero and build that label to uh, Music World Gospel and to see the, those artists today, uh, with Juanita Bynum, I can't leave Juanita Bynum out of that. And then to have uh, worked with Shaka Khan and did an album, Shaka Khan and London Symphony, and with Cool in the Gang, and to have done a Roll Bounce uh, soundtrack, Cadillac Records soundtrack, uh, Dream Girls soundtrack, uh, Fighting Temptations tr soundtrack. To, I, you know, I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful, and I think often my passion is not there. I'm not passionate about that part of the music industry anymore. And I advise everyone, when you get to this point in your life, start to look in the mirror and start to really identify what is now your passion, because we do sometimes transition from one passion to another. I'm just not passionate about it. And, and when I'm not passionate about it, I'm, it's not fun. I don't want to work. You, you guys can have work. I don't <laughs> ever want to work. <laughs> well, you know what, Matthew? Oftentimes, I think that people feel like when they ha they've been in this career for a long time, they're married to it. They have to stay with it for the rest of their lives. They don't think about, you know, hey, I can stop this and do something else. Well, I, 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 that's why I admire Destiny's Child. I admire those three women because they were smart enough to retire 
See, all the other girls' groups broke up with drama. Destiny's Child retired. They just said one day, we don't want to do this anymore. They retire. Now, the beauty of a retirement is you can come out of retirement. Michael Jordan did that <laughs> yeah. and won two more championship rings. Yeah. So the beauty of when you retire, it opens up that you can always come back. But I hope one day, I really do. I hope one day that I, I, I get the Google that says Beyonce is retired. Uh, I hope I get a Google one day that says Solange has retired. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is a, uh, this industry, if you don't leave, it will eat at you. Uh, yeah. And I didn't want that. I've seen what this music industry can do to people. Matthew, did you just say you hope you get a Google alert that they retired? Yeah. You know, you know, you know, they can call you and tell you that themselves. Yeah, I just read the Google alert. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like reading the Google alert. <laughs> and I don't even read the I don't even read the article. I just read the the caption. They're doing so much I can't even keep up with them, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, is there something you could tell us and the fans? Um something about Beyonce and Solange that would surprise them. It doesn't have to be anything salacious, just something that would surprise them. Well, a couple of things. The first thing that came is that they're best friends. Uh, and I've never seen them have, get into an argument, ever. Uh, they're just really, really close friends with each other. Uh, well, what would surprise them about Solange and Beyonce? Well, I, I don't know. It wouldn't be, it's not a surprise, but I, it's certainly a wish of mine. I would love to see them do an album together. Oh, I would love that. That's a dream, a dream that I have coming from a, a dad perspective. Is I would love to see them do a, a album together. Uh, you know, they pretty much, well, Solange used to wear zigzags and circles and squares. And when she dressed and Beyonce was always pretty meticulous and, and they just had two different styles. Uh, but they respected each other's style. Uh, we, as parents, uh, as we got into this music thing, we early on got therapy. I really believe in therapy, folks. Those of you that might don't. Uh, and we put Beyonce and Solange in therapy uh, and, it, and it helped they, they, because they never had this animosity uh, towards each other and don't today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of people don't know uh, Solange has written uh, a lot of Beyonce's, uh, co-written rather, uh, some of Beyonce's songs, or, you know, several of Destiny's Child songs. Um, Kelly's first album, Solange, wrote almost 50% of it. Uh, and so they've always been this creative force at the house growing up. All we had was shows after shows after shows after fashion show, after singing show, after modeling show, after art shows. All we had was shows at our house. But, you know, we had the cool house that all the neighborhood kids would come to. Was that in Third Ward or which neighborhood was yeah, that? Yeah, you know, we lived uh, uh, on Rosedale in Third Ward and then also on Parkwood which is yeah. um, there. So we, we live in Third Ward. And for those of you who don't know, we in a black neighborhood. Uh, it's a historically black neighborhood in Houston. Um, I grew up there um, before moving to South Park, but I went to all the Third Ward schools, Lockhart, Ryan, Yates. Yeah, so uh, wonderful neighborhood. Yes, and proud of it, very proud of it. You know, uh, the two sisters, uh, gosh, the dad was a dentist. Who am I thinking of? Uh, Debbie, Debbie Allen and Felicia Rashad. Yeah, they, they lived in Third Ward as, as well. Uh, so there's a lot of history, a lot of history in, in the Third Ward community. Yeah, H-Town? 
<laughs> H Town in the house. <laughs> so, Matthew, I'm going to ask you about three more questions. Then we're going to open it up to a couple of questions. You said you'll take a couple of questions from the audience. Sure. Um, you guys, again, uh, thanks to Vigani and uh, Blacktop University for hosting my All the Rage with Shelly Wade conversation with Dr. Matthew Knowles. Matthew, I'm interested to know, you know, because we know a lot of the artists you work with, but who's your favorite artist of all time? And also, do you have a favorite song of all time? Hmm. Wow. Favorite artist of all time would be And Marvin. you can't say you can't say your daughters. Marvin Gaye. Oh, good choice. Marvin Gaye. Do you have a favorite song of all time? Grew up with Marvin Gaye. Uh favorite song of all times. Hmm. Uh I would have to really think of that. I, I there's a lot of songs that I love. I can't say one song sticks out as the favorite okay if something comes to mind let us know what's yeah. the you know, i think this this is um these two questions um go together and i think it's really important to understand the mind of you know a person who's really been successful what's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning and what's the last thing you do before you go to bed the first thing that I do when I wake up in the morning is open my eyes. <laughs> ah, I got you, Shelly. I got you. <laughs> okay, got See, it. <laughs> for those of you that don't understand critical thinking, that was an example of it. <laughs> and those of you that don't understand media, that was an example of how you... You know, one of my books, actually, Shelly, is Public Relations and Media. Uh, I know. PR Strategies for a Digital Age. Mm -hmm. I want to give a shout out to Wendy Williams. Wendy, you said some good stuff about me yesterday. And I can't wait to get you, Wendy, on my podcast. What did she say about you? Uh, she was just talking about that, that crazy stuff. And, but she, oh, the one I asked you about, the Chloe yeah, Alley? Okay, yeah, got it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's your answer. Open your eyes. You're not going to give us like it's deep. You know what? I meditate. I do this and I do. You're not going to give us one of those? No, because I don't. Okay. Well, what, what's the last thing you do before you go to bed? <laughs> the last thing I do before I go to bed is tell my wife I love her. Oh, that's so sweet. That's what I do Aww. every night. That's very sweet. Okay, um, we're going to open it up to, um, to uh, a few questions from the audience. So let's, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it correctly. Talia, what's your question for Dr. Matthew Knowles? Yes, um, it's Talia. Is it, we can ask anything or? Uh, uh, I don't want to talk about that, uh, that, uh, that music industry stuff that happened last week. I'd rather just keep it. Yeah, we already, you already talked about it with yeah. me. So. Oh, no, no, no. I just wanted to ask, um, because my favorite singer is Whitney. So I just wanted to know, like, has Matthew ever met Whitney, seen her perform live? What was that like? That's all. I, I have. And thank you for your question. Uh, I have met Whitney you know, on several, several occasions. Um, you know, that was a part of Whitney's life. Um, you could tell she was unhappy. Uh, you can kind of sense that when you look at photos. And uh, Again, this industry, this music industry can, can really grind at you. At some point, you just get tired of hearing all the negatives. Uh, people don't understand really their fans, so they don't understand the music industry at all. So they say ridiculous idiotic things and and at a point you just get tired of it uh, and i think that also she had just gotten to the point that she wasn't happy with the music industry and so um my very warm person she was so warm and nice when she first met uh, destiny's child uh and they certainly looked up to her uh and, and just a wonderful person uh, energy from that regard but again i could just sense uh, towards the end that uh, the industry was really grinding on her. Thank you. Thank you, Talia. Great uh, question. Next you're gonna, yeah, really great question. And, and great artist to be your favorite artist. Super talented. 
Um, next up, Mr. Knowles, Dr. Knowles. We've got one of my don't friends be on a uh, club. Damn, Matthew, I don't know you. <laughs> Rico Reform, who is uh, not only a voiceover artist, but a super talented hip hop artist. What's your question, uh, Rico? Hey, thank you, Shelly. And thank you, Bugani, for bringing me up. Um, Dr. Knows, uh, first and foremost, let me commend you on all that you have done. And, you know, just uh, congratulate you on, you know, just having such a beautiful family and just a, you know, a beautiful story. So um, just commending you on that, first and foremost. Um, you were speaking about uh, your book, the, I'm sorry, it was the, excuse me, it's the, if the title's uh, getting away from me, it's the 10 Traits of Success? Yes, the DNA of Achievers, 10 Traits of Highly Successful Professionals. But the DNA of Achievers is, is really the, the, the breadth of it. And what are those things that successful people do? And, and this is not uh, just from my perspective. Every chapter, I have three highly successful people, like the chairman of L'Oreal. Uh, I had uh, uh, names that you, I, I won't name them all, but it's other people sharing their stories about how they come to get their, when it talk about passion or how they think out of the box or how they build strategic teams. Uh, so, it's not just from my perspective, and it's a workbook. At, after each chapter, you have to put in the work. And so if you go to MatthewKnowles.com, my name with one T, you can order the book there, Rico, and I will sign it and send it back to you. And by the way, it's less expensive ordering, ordering from, from me than it is outside. Uh, so if just go to MatthewKnowles.com and you can order it. And I'll, I'll sign and ship it to you. And thank you for the kind words you said in the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, Rico. Okay, so now we're going to take a question from Warashal. I hope I didn't butcher your name. Good afternoon. Thank you so much to Begani and Blacktop University for hosting this incredible discussion. And Ms. Wade and, and Dr. Knowles, what a rich, rich from touching health, success, and music. It was just phenomenal. Mr. Knowles, what I, Dr. Knowles, what I wanted to ask you is, as you think about retiring from the music industry, what do you see as um, your, your next career? Well, that's a wonderful spirit about you. I've never met you, but I'm looking at your photo and hearing your voice, and it just brings out a warm spirit. Uh, and I've been, I've been doing it so long, I can tell just by listening to uh, someone's spirit. So it's something really special about you. Um, you know, my next thing in life is uh, film and TV. We have three of my books are now have been green, greenlit, Racism from the Eyes of a Child, the Emancipation of Slaves Through Music and Destiny's Child, the Untold Story, uh, documentaries uh, and TV uh, DACA series. That's what we're working on now over the next two years. Uh, I'll do more public speaking uh, and I will write, uh, I wanna write an artist management book I want to write an entrepreneurship book, uh, and I want to write uh, one last book called When I Look Back that tells my story. Wow, that sounds amazing. Thank you for sharing all of that. Thank you. Thanks, for Um We're going to get to our last three questions now. Um, next up, Nia. Hey, everybody. Thank you for bringing me up. Uh, my name is Nia Hill, and I am here to say hello to uh, my old friend, Matthew. Uh, it's been a minute. Nia, I mean, like, this is Nia, Nia? It's Nia, Nia. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's happening? What's up, family? What's you got up, it. Family? You got it. I saw your name, and I was like, hold on. What's happening here? He's here. Um, wow. I'll, Nia, we go yeah, all the way back to that first, project, that first project seat filler. God, yeah, that's right. That was 2000. I'm not going to say like three, <laughs> something like that. 
<laughs> yeah, Kelly Rowland was in it, but I have to say, like, yeah. honestly, real talk. Um, I I have a, a a it's kind of a Grammy on accident, and Matthew is a huge part of the reason for that. Um, and a few other things. Uh, remember Dream Girls? I remember. And how you called them? I have told a mother. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, look, he, you really have stepped in the trenches for me, you know what I mean, in Hollywood. And, and we, you know, developed a friendship and, and, you know, just, yeah, he's family. So I just wanted to speak to the character of the man uh, who I consider a friend. Um, I will DM you. I don't, is your IG attached? Just, just get with me. My um, wife. Uh, I'll just get with you. Yeah, I, I don't know how to do all that stuff. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's all good. Send my love to Gina. I'm going to jump. I've got a, a writing call, but love you. So love happy you, for your success. This made my day. Uh, yes. Mia, I love your voice, by the way. Uh, uh, thank, thank you, you. Mia. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, family. I'll be in touch. Uh, you guys have a great one. All you right. too. Thank you, Mia. Man, oh. that was... That was amazing, Shelly. I, I mean, God was thinking about Nia. It's so wonderful when you hear old friends and and people you have worked with over the years. And yeah, I mean, I'm I'm happy that um, you she made you happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if you knew this, Grant uh, um, Matthew. Did I ever tell you I grew up wanting to be a Grammy Award winning singer? Yes, you have. I, I, I always say that. I always put Grammy Award winning singer. I don't just say I grew up wanting to be a singer. I say Grammy Award winning singer. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a, uh, certainly a major difference because <laughs> in our industry, think of, uh, super, uh, think of football. Mm -hmm. uh, winning the Super Bowl is what winning the Grammy means to the music industry. It's the highest accomplishment yeah. of an artist. That's why uh, I always feel like I have to say it. <laughs> yeah, and to know that both of my daughters are Grammy winners, and one has won, won 24 Grammys, and wow. could possibly uh, this Grammy be the number one female Grammy winner of all time. Uh, that is pretty freaking amazing. Yeah, it is. She deserves it. Yeah. Okay, so let's get to our next question from Elijah. Welcome, Elijah. Hi, Miss Shelley. Hello, Mr. Matthew. How are you, sir? I'm good, Elijah. How are you today, man? I'm doing great. Doing great. Really happy to be here. Um, I'm a friend and family of Blacktop University um, and the Love Bomb Room and, and uh, just a part of the fam here. And I consider myself a part of, you know, the growing talent on this app. So my question is kind of, uh, multifold. So I say, one, um, have you absorbed what kind of talent is happening here in the audio space, um, digitally, even, you know, um, across platforms, um, um, you know, with this being a, sort of a flagship of, uh, you know, those advancements. And then two, um, yeah, I know you have the book, so I have to get the book. And I, I know you said you're kind of like not passionate about the music industry. I'm hoping you might be pa passionate about mentorship or whatever. Are you looking for any killers in training? Or I'm looking to be a killer uh, in training. And um, I'm not just talent, but I have an eye for the back end as well. Um, I know I can't do everything. I have to, I'm starting to delegate with my own channel and what have you. But I'm trying to be a young killer in training, Matthew Knowles. And I hope you can pray for me. Well, Elijah, <laughs> Elijah, I love your energy. God, I love your energy. Uh, and that's what is required. You know, I always say, you know, I can sit here and talk to you guys. Or I can have energy when I talk to you. Uh, and it means a lot to hear that energy and passion. And so you gave me that. But, you know, I'm glad you clarified something. And I'm glad you said it, Elijah. Uh, me leaving the music industry... I am not leaving the, the academia side of the music business. I, I'm going to, you know, one of my areas of educate and motivate is to educate those, which is why I teach at the University of Houston and Prairie View, about music industry, about the business of the music industry, about artist development, about how to use 
technology now in the digital age that we would do differently. So I'm glad you, you said that because I, I would have been remiss if I didn't make that very clear. And I don't think I did, but you know, I, I think if you just, I, Google is amazing thing because uh, you can stay current with what's going on around you and you can learn, pick one area, Elijah, you gave me a bunch of areas. Pick one of those, and I suggest that you focus on that. One of the biggest mistakes of young people, especially, is that they want to be a whole bunch of things. They want to be an artist. They want to have their own record label. They want to be a songwriter and a producer, have a clothing line, all at the same time. No focus on one thing and being great at that. And then it makes it easier to do all the other things once you built an audience for one thing. Well, I th think that one thing just right now is Clubhouse. Most people know this is my time host role. I'm on here <laughs> full time hours, overtime all week, and you know we're building a, a nice community. Uh, but I, you know, there's just you know there's a lot of opportunity sort of presenting, and I just kind of. Um, I definitely feel unmentored and unguided. It's sort of un it's sort of uncharted territory. This whole situation over here it's brand new for all of us. And then you know some of us are having access to monetization and sponsorships and just what does that look like? And you know so it's it's a whole new uh, thing. You know, well, and I sounds sounds like you, you you guys need to call me and uh, talk to my people and let me help out in some way. I would love it and invitation taken and I'm done speaking. <laughs> Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Knowles. Thank you Thank so you. much. What a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, Elijah. You know, what, um, um, Matthew, that's actually a great point. Um, can you hear me, Matthew? I hear you. Great. Okay. Very cool. Um, he met, Elijah made a really great point. Um, I was going to say, you know, as we were introing you, it's his author, professor, lecturer, and you go on and on and on. You know, they call this current generation the slash generation. You know, it's like I'm a singer slash this slash that. And they have so many things. Uh, and a lot of people may, you know, do a bunch of things, but they're not experts at a single one of them and it's so funny that you with the, the amount of success that you've had said what you said because I I had the honor of interviewing uh, Quincy Jones at the beginning of my career and I just knew he did so many things he's an amazing uh, musician excuse me but he's a, an amazing music producer he's an amazing um, movie producer and television producer and he just does so many things and, and does them well and I asked him what would be the advice he would give someone coming up like me to achieve that kind of success and he said what you said masters learn something master it one thing don't try to do everything at once and well i mean uh, uh, and to go even a step further um once you master that you bring an audience with you and success is really based on the audience the number of people in your audience. It's on numbers. Audience equals sales. He who has the greater audience will sell more. So if you build an art, uh, audience, let's say, use an example, you're uh, an artist, a singer, an uh, entertainer. I don't like to use the word singer. Um, and you build an audience, then you can take, let's say it's a million people. A million people are now following you then, you know, the greater possibility of your live events that those million people might come. All won't, but at least you have an audience of a million people. If one day you open a clothing line, maybe those million people, some of them might buy your clothing line. But it's all because you focus on being a great artist first to build that audience. And now you can sell multiple things to because you have a built in audience. So the day that you decide to have a clothing line, you don't have to spend millions of dollars developing an audience. You already have the audience. So that's why you focus on being great at one thing, build that audience, and then you can take that audience with you with all that you do for the rest of your life. Yeah, really, really great advice. Now, I just gave away 
a million dollars worth of information. Some <laughs> people that's going to go over their heads. Some people are saying, wow. Yeah, this is some stuff. You're, you're, you're dropping a lot of great nuggets, Matthew. You really are. Um, so let's move on to the final question from Just Angel. Hi, Just Angel. Hi, Shelly. <laughs> uh, cute laugh. <laughs> well, hi, Dr. Knowles. Um, hi, Shelly. Um, I'm a resident artist with Black Top University and the Love Bomb Room. And the only question I have for you, Dr. Knowles, is when was the last time you laughed until you cried and why? Oh, man. Oh, that's I love good, that. That's a great final question, Angel. <laughs> Just Angel? Yes. I, I, this is no BS. I, uh, my wife and I, we laugh every night before we go to bed. We watch TV and we laugh. I become a comedian. I become a poet. I bec You know, I talked about my kids doing all of that stuff. Now she has to watch me be a kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So we laugh every night man i tell you it's fun <laughs> i love that thank you great answer great last question and great answer <laughs> um matthew would you say that um you know your cancer cancer battle um you know gave you a different perspective on life and, and allowed you to be that person that laughs and becomes a comedian no i, I really was always that uh i, I just think with age also but uh, being a cancer survivor certainly did give me a new perspective on life and that live every day to the fullest because as a cancer survivor, it only says at this moment, Shelly, I'm cancer free. It doesn't say an hour from now or tomorrow or next year I'm cancer free. It mm -hmm. doesn't say that. And, and, you know, people have to understand when people say that they're cancer free, they're only cancer free for that moment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and so for me, I just, I have always had, you know, me, Shelly, I, you know, I'm the guy that care less what people say about me. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as my banker, when I <laughs> talk to my banker, they're excited <laughs> as hell. Now, it would matter to me if my banker said some bad stuff. <laughs> but, but other than that, man, you know, I always share in a very, very humble way that I get the, the opportunity and the gratitude to go home to my beautiful wife, my big ass house, my big ass car. It, <laughs> I, I don't have a big car and a big house, but I just use that in, 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 in just storytelling. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'm grateful that I can live a life. Uh, I'm focused now on health and wellness. I'm focused now. I've lost 30 pounds. Uh, I'm focused now. I don't drink alcohol. Uh, and not to say that that's bad, uh, just because of the sugar, it helps, you know, if I stop drinking alcohol it helps me to maintain my weight and to lose weight because mm -hmm. what happened is cancer cells really focus in on our body tissue mm -hmm. uh, and our weight so we we have to be careful about that and and yeah. i know if i'm gonna stay cancer free i have to be and fit not only physically fit but mentally fit so yeah. i have a different outlook on life uh, from that perspective, I was really never that focused on fitness, uh, yeah. but today I am uh, yeah. fit. So, you know, it's, it's those things and giving back. And, and again, I can't overemphasize to those of you that are true leaders. Look, people are going to say things about you. Uh, you just can't let that bother. I don't even read this stuff, man. I mean, lead, leaders that I know, they don't. They don't even do social media, quite frankly. They're too busy running companies. and They don't have time for the social media. Yeah. Uh, not that social media is bad. I'm not saying that. I'm just giving you the real mm -hmm. that highly successful people aren't on social media. They just don't have the time. Mm -hmm. uh, They've so got people on I social am. media for them. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you gave it away, Shelly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Hey, but this has been great, Shelly. Yeah, I you know, mean, Matthew. 
<laughs> this is like talking to one of my kids. I tell you, I'm so proud of you. And the, <laughs> Thank the, you. And, and to have Leah call in. I, mean, I know, Leah, that was awesome. Leah to call in. That was really a surprise. I just That's wanna... what I said. Like, Nia. Nia. The Nia. The Nia. The Nia. Nia. <laughs> I um, want to point out real quick, um, you're talking about social media and, and um, Elijah and Just Angel uh, mentioned to you the love bomb room. And I have to tell you what that is because it's so amazing. Um, at Bigani, shout out to Bigani who's on stage with us in uh, Blacktop University. They do this, do this thing where they open up the love bomb room and people just come in and, and lift each other up and support each other. And, oh my God, you're, you know, just give encouraging words. And sometimes you just need that, you know, it's like, Oh my God, the love bomb room is open. I'm going to open that up and just hear positivity. So, Shelly, um, do, you, do you want us to give them a sample? Because I have. Yes, some of give in this Matthew day. a love bomb, please. So, look, so Elijah, just Angel, Shalita, Warshaw, and Rico, um, do your thing and love bomb Mr. Matthew Knowles. <laughs> and Shelly, by the way, so they're both on stage. <laughs> All right, I'm ready for this. Bit. Pew, 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 Matthew Knowles. Hey, Mr. Oh. Matthew, Dr. Knowles. Listen. It's the mustache for me. It's the six two <laughs> plus for me. It's the uncle daddy who know everything, who got your money straight, who gonna help you get through college, who going who going <laughs> look, who gonna come and send a care package um, to your college, okay? Um, I'm finna get on this here uh, little metro bus situation, so I don't want to be too loud, but I'm gonna start with that, Thank and you, I'm Elijah. done speaking. <laughs> what about what about Shalita? <laughs> Shalita, get on it, Shalita. Oh, uh, I'm texting you. I'm telling you to bring Eddie up. Okay, Eddie's up here. <laughs> hey, Eddie, are you by your guitar? Where are you by? We can do it. Ah, uh, yeah, our way. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we have a, we have a All right. And again, she, and, a, and again, Shelly is here too. So love bomb her. And by the way, oh, guys. Man, okay. So <laughs> you could check us out on social media at ch love bomb room. That's at ch love bomb room. And revert to the website www blacktop the word universe and the word city. So blacktop university as it's spelled yeah. up here. Dot com. I just want to say uh, this interview was really inspiring. Uh, I've been a Destiny Child fan since like 96, actually, and it's been an uh, inspiration. And I'm also an East Texan, but I'm Northeast Texas, so Longview. You know, yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And Ma um, Dr. Matthew Knowles, I believe one of your um, old friends. Hey, here, Matthew. Colette. So I'm going to go ahead and remind you of who I am. Thank you for calling Columbia Records. You've reached Jamet Gidry's office. This is Paulette speaking. <laughs> hey, Matthew. What's How up, are man? you? Yeah, I want to just straight love bomb you. I got in on the tail end. And I want to let y'all know that this man is man, phenomenal. I work at Columbia Records. And when I quit in 2000, I remember I called Matthew and Matthew invited me to come and be a part of his company. But due to family issues, family health issues, I had to go home to California. And Matthew, I don't know if you remember offering me to come to work for you over at Music World Management, but I will I do. never ever forget it. You had, before that offer, you earned my respect for what you did for your daughter's careers, how you were as a manager, the things that you did. Matthew, do you remember when y'all were signed to Columbia and you got Def Jam to do that promo for the girls? Do you remember that? Yeah. I remember that. <laughs> I remember that, man. I got another label to, to do the promo. Get another label to give your artist money. <laughs> That's awesome. You know did that, y'all. How'd you Matthew finagle Knowles that, Matthew? Back. How'd you finagle well, that? Well, let me just let, let me just share, Paulette. I uh, it means a lot to me when industry people because I think we have to do more of educating the public of how this record stuff world really works because they don't know and they get Jedi mind and get sidetracked on stuff and not have the information. So it makes me just really happy because you know what really happened with Destiny Shaw and what happens in the music industry. And it was always a pleasure. You always helped me out. You were always the same personality, very smart. And I'm just so happy to hear your voice, Pilot. Wow. <laughs> wow is right. <laughs> I'm just, when I saw you, I'm like, 
Matthew, Matthew. And I kept him like, oh my God. And I, I had to ping Bigani to be like, if it's not too late, can you please bring me to stage? Just so much respect for you. So much love for you guys. This man is, I'm going to tell y'all, he's like self-made. He's, he's self-educated when it comes to this music industry stuff. You know, you have those people that can go to school and get the degrees and tutelage, whatever, whatever. Matthew was grassroots, y'all. He did this on his own. He is a master at this craft. Um, and, I, and I respect his game and his, his skill and his knowledge so much more because he didn't have the tutelage type situation. And I saw what he did and how he learned what he needed to learn for the success of his daughter's careers. And Matthew, just so much like it's people. Though, these are the stories that I know people don't know. You know, right. these are the stories that I know people don't know. Why? Because I was there. You know, so I just it's just so much love and respect. I've always had so much love and so much respect for you. And I, I'm glad Dr. Dr. Knows. Look, I'm like, I'm like, do I call him Dr. Knows? Or do I call him <laughs> Dr. Knows? Well, well Paulette, you've well. you known me for years, so you can call me Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> it's so great just connecting with you on here. And I'm actually, I'm going, I'm going to slide into your email. I went to, I saw your profile, so I'm going to slide into your email. Um, I have some things that I, I would love just your, your opinion and just to bounce off of you. Um, that I am now wanting to go back into music. So, um, oh, well, my email address, my my email address has not changed in twenty seven years. Nor okay, has, nor has my phone number. Okay, <laughs> okay. no problem. I'm gonna All be right. reaching out to you. That and was a beautiful tribute, Paulette. It's great to see you. Thank you. Thank beautiful you. Beautiful tribute. <laughs> I think they're ready for you, Matthew. All right, I'm ready. Rico. Ladies and gentlemen, Blacktop University presents The Love Bomb Room. For your knowledge, thank you for being here. Thank you for educating us. Thank you for supporting the movement. And I want to say thank you for your life and what you brought into this world. And you're a survivor, and I want to say that's amazing. Wow. Because that's inspiring to everyone in here. 
If anyone has anyone that's been through it, I know it's not an easy thing. But the way that you look at the world, because of it is amazing. So I want to say thank you one more time for being inspirational. Yeah. Oh. Do you have anything you want to say to Dr. Nose? Yes, I do. Dr. Knows, it's me again that asked you about laughter. I just wanted to say that I'm a survivor too. Uh. Last October, I'm free of ductal carcinoma had my surgeries so that's why I wanted to ask about laughing it's a thing to survive anything with cancer so I felt everything that you said oh, oh, oh. so thank you again for all you've done for your daughters and all you've done in music and all you've done in here for free <laughs> like i heard you say we could be paying millions of dollars for this information but you shared it from your heart and i just wanted to say from a survivor to another survivor thank you Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's my love bomb. That's my love bomb for you. That's my love bomb. Do you have something for my dear and never bless Shelly? And you know we can't get a second. Is a sunny day. being who you are, each and every one of you. Oh, surely we're gonna end this love Guys, I, I, Matt, Matt, you got a, you got a whole performance. Wow. Um, I, well, I just want to first say thank you uh, 
I have to say I teared up a little bit. Aw. Yeah. Thank you, guys. That was sweet. I, that was unexpected. I didn't know you guys were going to do that. I just wanted to shout out to the Love Bum Room. But, Matthew, that gives you an idea of what they do every day. They open up the room and they just do a lot of positive stuff. So we need that. Um, well, we need we that today. So. Shelly, thank you for allowing him into this space. And, Matthew, yeah. like I said, I'm looking up to you and looking up to your daughters and your family for so long, like having an imprint of this generation and generations to come. And yeah. Shelly, you've been that, fo that footprint for even women in the business. So like we look up to both of you guys. Now. Thank you, Shalita. And thanks to Bagani and uh, Blacktop University. Um, Dr. Knowles, um, I want to, you know, give you your proper before we get out of here. Author, professor, lecturer, motivational speaker, music executive, artist, manager, entrepreneur, fighter, and survivor. Um, of cancer, Dr. Matthew Knowles, host of the brand new podcast, Matthew Knowles Impact. Anything you want to say in closing, Matthew? Well, I, I first want to say again to uh, just that tribute. Uh, wow, it took me by surprise. <laughs> <clears throat> so I always like to say, I, I say this, and, and I think it's appropriate now. Uh, I'm a storyteller. So I'll share a story of uh, going down an escalator in Los Angeles uh, at LAX airport. And at the bottom of the escalator was a nun from Mexico. And she was asking people to, to give uh, to the orphan uh, there. And so she gave me a, when I gave, she gave me a card. And this is what I just want to end today because just those, that beautiful song just brought me to those thoughts. At the back of that card, it said, pray not for a life free from trouble. Pray for triumph over trouble. For what you and I call adversity. God, the universe, calls opportunity. So think about Praying not for a life full of tr trouble. We'll have some troubled times. But what we might should pray is for triumph. And when we have adversity and bad things happen in our life, also look at the opportunity that it gave. And that tribute, that beautiful tribute, and I thank all of you again because I viewed it as a tribute. I thank you for that. And I thank you for giving me this opportunity in Blacktop University. Pew, pew, pew! Pew, pew! <laughs> pew, pew! Pew, pew! Pew, Thank you, Matthew. So Thank you so very kindly. <laughs> and I felt like you took us to church right there. I, was, I almost teared up listening to you say that. Well, thank you, Shelly. Yeah. I love you. Love you, too. And, and um, we will talk soon, okay? All right. Bye. <laughs>